Hi, this, this is Mr. Anderson, everyone. and in yeah, this podcast, yeah. I'm going to talk about math. Uh, what is matter? Math. Matter is anything that has hmm. mass and hey. takes up space. It's so it has rings. a volume. Um, now, rings. scientists got together and they decided. To Seems think like about, you know, I look like there's a white here. The last hundred years. I haven't met one. This is a white here over here. This is and not what a Hubble jet. discovered. This is an emergency. Look in the universe. Everything in the universe is redshifted. That means everything is moving away from everything else. So if we play that backwards through time, what that led us to is this point at which all matter began as a single point. So that's where we got this idea of a big bang. That there's been this expansion of the universe. But what is that universe made up of? Matter. A lot of it's actually dark matter. But that's a totally different story. Um, this is a, a cool side note. This is Wait, called Aragel. Guys, so this is a, come on. A, it's well, a can't solid, say our chatter. but it's an incredibly I think um, are lying. Uh, low density solid. Power. It's, power. it's actually made by making there's a gel Emily and then replacing that out. liquid inside there with a gas. There is a room so like here's cool. It's, it's insulating this flower from a Bunsen burner. Pretty amazing. So we'll talk about states. What? Well. I don't so know. what is matter? Matter can be broken right? down into two I things. Can be I don't know what it right. Pure substances, <coughs> and then it can be broken down into <coughs> mixtures. So everything you think of, I think I did. To the air that I, I don't care. I did. These things, and so the first one is going to be a pure substance. And so an example. This is helium gas. Helium gas is made up of only one atom, and so we call that an atom. No, I don't. Carbon, for example, carbon in a pencil that you might be using, is also an element. What? It's only made up of one type of atom. As we move up the level um, in pure substance, we can also have what are called compounds. And if you have so, if you have something that's made up of, for example, one or, or me, one or more atoms that are put together in a specific ratio. Two or more, um, and then we have a compound. And so some, some things that you're familiar with would be like H2O or water. So the water in the droplet right here is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. Now the glucose that's inside this plant right here is actually a compound as well. And so pure substances are elements and compounds. But they you have to be pretty pure, Elliot. and that's where they get their name. You've got to um, next, we have what are called mixtures. Now come after example of a mixture, one of my favorite you mixtures would be uh, soda. This is actually me. Mountain Dew now inside here. If we look inside the can, it's no great. a you must uh, be a homogeneous mixture. I don't come after me, my oh, you can't I don't hear a word here. Are you hot? And so if you look inside Mountain uh, Dew, there's going to be water, but there's also going to be carbon dioxide, and there's also going to be sugar. And there's also yeah, going to be caffeine, and there's going to be yellow I know, I'm not here. And all those things are mixed together, okay, but you can't tell the different types. Me. So we call that a homogeneous mixture. Now, yeah. most everything no, that you're used to dealing with. No like way, like you're a one. Alice, computer, Alice. Uh, I mean, here's a one. Anything is not going to be that. It's <coughs> going to be a heterogeneous <coughs> mixture. Heterogeneous <coughs> mixture. I don't know, can you me? You're a me. This is blood. So we might think blood is like a homogeneous mixture. But when you get down to the level of blood, you can see red blood cells, white blood cells. You find it as me here. You can see the level of platelets if you look at it. And so that's a heterogeneous mixture. So that's how we classify it. Please find him as Emily. Now, this is a great diagram because it but shows you in the universe, this shows you the atomic number. So we're going all the way from the first hydrogen all the way up here to uranium on the far end. This is how much they naturally exist in, in, uh, in the universe. And what you find is that we have a lot of hydrogen and helium. We don't have so much beryllium. And then we have these points that kind of level up as we go through the atomic number. Now, this is a log scale. That means we have a whole bunch of hydrogen and helium. And you might be thinking, I wonder why that is. Well, the sun is actually gets its energy um, from hydrogen fusing into something called helium. And that gives out a huge amount of energy. Um, if you've heard of this before, E equals MC squared. This is Einstein's um, theory, uh, excuse me, Einstein's equation that relates energy and mass. And the cool thing about it is when we convert hydrogen to helium, we actually lose a little bit of mass. But where does that mass go? That mass is converted to energy. And it's the energy that's given by the sun in this room. Right now. Okay. So I'm not only out here. I don't have to leave you, please. Um, there was this guy named Dr. Tyson Dodd. Right. 
break down the yeah, bone marrow. Yeah, you put a It's a small little I mean, uh, bit if we kept cutting it. Uncuttable or undivisible. Um, now, know, on the large, you know on the large scale, matter. elements, compounds, friend, um, ride it. different states of matter. And so, states kind of, of matter are linked here. to the kinetic energy. Right here, sure. right here, the ones that you're probably familiar with, There's are going to be solids. Find so, it? you can think of this right now as like ice in this beaker. As we start to add energy to it, the, those water molecules will actually move around, and so that forms that next state, which is going to be called a liquid. And if we give enough energy to it, then this is going to be water boiling, or these elements are boiling, and so they're eventually jumping off into a gas. And so you're probably familiar with those three. So if we decrease the energy, then we can go right back to a solid. Now the two ones on here that I think are pretty cool are plasma. That's when we get a gas really excited, and it starts to ionize, and it starts to give off. Electrons, and um, then we form something called plasma. Uh, where have you seen a plasma before? You can see that like in the stars, but you also see it like in fluorescent lights. Um, so that's a, a state of matter that you may be familiar with. But what happens when we really cool it down? When we really cool it down below a solid, we form something called Bose Einstein condensate. And so it was predicted by these two scientists, Bose, who was Einstein, who was German. Uh, and what they predicted is that when it really cool stuff down towards near absolute zero, weird stuff is going to take over. And so this really wasn't tested until 1995. A couple of scientists at the University of Colorado actually were able to use lasers to cool stuff down towards near um, absolute zero. And what they found is that when you cool it down, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle takes over. What does that mean? Well, when you slow down those atoms, you know specifically where they are. And according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, when you know something is, where it is, you don't know anything about its momentum. So you get this weird spike where you don't even know where the atoms are. That's pretty wild. That's something that's wild. Um, but again, there are five states of matter. Going from energy, we go from plasma, which is high, high energy, all the way down to this boson. Um, but movement between those, we've got terms for those. So what happens if we take a gas and turn it into a liquid? You're probably familiar with that. We call that condensation. Whereas likewise, if we vaporize, it goes up to gas. And so I love this diagram because it shows all of those. But remember, as we increase the energy, we can move up into different states. Um, how do we measure math? We can measure math it directly. Math means a lot of it. That's right. It's a red variety. Just the way you look for a red variety. Just the way you want. Look like a red variety. Just you don't have to be alone here. Sorry, I'm like drawing over a place. Here's a cool starting all over the place now. We can measure it indirectly. Really like this. How do we do that? You don't want everyone here. I don't even think like you here. I don't even think you're measuring. And figure out the mass of that in the grams. I want to measure. Specific volume. I could then. Looks like Alice and Emily here so I take the mass of the you're small the bit. You're the bitch. Don't worry. I, I, I told you I'm in here. The right. brand's variety. So just the way. So hide on here. Oh, I can be twice the whole word in my bag. Three times. What the fuck? So. And all I have to know is the You're sure the they have to quit. It has messed up. Just this. So you messed up, do you? Really Honestly, power potential is so not so bad. Alright. And today, I'm sorry, Lori, but I confirm no kid has me. Did you are adults and the kids in there? Um, and so I think, the children? Uh, yeah, I know. Isn't where it do right? we find matter? And we'll do this in the next few podcasts. We find it on the periodic table. And so the periodic table organizes all of those pure substance elements that we have into an organizational chart that also shows us properties of matter. And so that's just kind of an introduction to matter. And I hope that's helpful.